Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio with part two of my Epson uh, printer saga. I put out a video today's Tuesday. This will go out later today or tomorrow on Wednesday. Yeah. So I wanted to um, reiterate something. Maybe people misunderstood. I scanned a whole bunch of pages out of this book onto the scanner to print them out to use them and to test them that they might be something I would like to recreate for my Etsy store. Unfortunately, when I used my Epson ink tank printer, it left tiny white lines, which I held up to the camera so people could see on almost every, well, it did leave it on every single one of my scans. Even the things where you cannot see like large patches of black, like this one's really obvious because you can see the white lines. And yes, I can use them for something else. That's not a problem. You know, they'll be fodder in, in any of my journals. That's fine. But what is not fine is if I do a larger piece and then see those lines running through my larger piece. So I wanted to try to experiment. This is the original that I did of the color one. Then I ran, I ran, uh, let's see, where's the other one I did? Eh, but I can't find it. It was sitting here on the desk. So I, I ran another print through of this as the copy and it had the white lines in it again. So it's something to do with the printer. I've looked at all the settings that I can find and I can't figure out what to do with it. We bought it at Sam's. The box has already been cut up and put in the trash. So I'm stuck with this thing and that's the end of that. I'm not real thrilled, but I do have another printer that scans much better and the color portion on it is way better than this Epson tank printer. The problem is it's a cartridge for the black ink and the color ink, which means that anytime I do color copies of something, it sucks ink like crazy. So I decided I was gonna tr do an experiment. So let me show you what I ended up doing. So I took, where did it go? I swear there is like not much stuff on my desk and yet I still cannot find things. So I did an experiment. I took this piece of paper here and I laid a piece of vellum down on top of it and I traced some of it, but not all of it. These do not match, but that's okay. I don't really care. So I traced it. Then I took the vellum copy. I traced it on that and then I laid it down here to finish off the last little bits of it. Then I made a white photocopy of it here on white computer paper. You cannot see, at least I can't, and I'm looking, I'm scrutinizing this a lot. I cannot see the white lines in this because this is such a busy pattern that you really can't see the white lines. So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's a fluke. Or maybe it's because, like I said, this is so busy, you can't, you can't see anything, sorry. You can't see anything on this. So I thought I would try something else. So I took some jelly printed paper and I thought, okay, I'm gonna run this through with the jelly printed paper. Wait, wrong one, with jelly printed paper. Now, I, I wasn't sure which way to put, um, I scanned this, then I have it in a file on the computer, and then I thought, well, I'll print the scanned copy on the jelly print paper. As you can see, I've done it twice here. I wasn't sure which side, you know, this is a back feed paper. My other printer was different, so I knew which exactly way to feed it into the paper tray to get the side printed on I wanted. It printed on the opposite side. I was not 
that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to print on this side. It printed on this side and I do not see the white lines in this one where I saw the white lines in the other stuff. Now it looks a little blurry here, but I think that's because the ink bled from one side of the paper to the other. So this side looks very fuzzy and not quite as defined as the black and white side. Okay. So I thought, okay, maybe I should try to learn how to feed paper in. So I took this and I fed it in. And again, I don't see the white lines on this one like I did the stuff. Oh, well, I do. I see white lines here. There's a white line that goes right across here. You might not be able to see it on camera, but I can see it um, with the naked eye. I see at least one, one line that goes all the way here across. And that's a jelly print. Okay. So then, okay, I thought, well, I want to run, uh, maybe what I should do is put this in the paper feeder and make a copy of this. Uh, put this in the, yeah, what did I do? I put this in the paper feeder because I wanted what was printed on here to come out on um, white paper, but it was really hard doing it. Oh, I know what it was. I wanted this to be on another piece of vellum. So I took a empty sheet of vellum and put it through the machine at least six times and it would get stuck. I had a paper jam. What a nightmare. So then I thought, okay, I guess I have to attach it to a piece of paper. So what I did was I took my tape runner, my little bitty tape runner, and ran a little bit of tape all around the outsides of it, then stuck the vellum paper on here, completely blank, so everything's blank, and then printed it from what I had scanned. So the file for the mashup here printed onto the vellum but I had to have the white paper on it because the vellum was so slick and so thin, my printer would not push it through. Um, I, didn't have, I don't have problems with vellum with the other printer, but I have problems with vellum on the Epson, and I, there's no place on there for extra skinny paper. So I have to tape everything now to a piece of paper. When I did that, it ripped some of this, but thankfully it didn't rip the vellum because basically vellum's plastic. But be careful if you ever do this because whatever is stuck on here when you rip it off might get ripped itself. So then I took the vellum, I turned it upside down. Now this is the printed side. I turned it upside down and I used the plethora of Sharpie markers I own and I colored the back side of the print so it's really vibrant on this side but then it looks different on this side which I'm really pleased with the way it looks. My choices of colors were limited to the Sharpies I had but I thought this was pretty cool. I'm not thrilled about having to tape the vellum onto the typing paper but you know big deal no big deal. So that is that. So I'm, if there were any lines in the black and white copy, which when I ran it onto the white paper, I did look at the white paper and there don't seem to be any lines through this. So I, the only thing I can think of is this printed onto color shows the lines more visibly than if you just do it on black and white. Because this was the way it looked when I scanned it, but then when I ran it through things with color, I get white lines through here. So if you're going to buy an Epson tank printer, don't buy the cheapest one there is. Um, buy one that has different paper options on it, like if it says extra thin paper, extra thick paper, don't let it just say computer paper plain paper. Because if you are like me and you experiment with different kinds of paper, rice paper, origami paper, vellum, anything like that, 
your printer may not be able to accommodate the printing needs that you're hoping for. All right, so that's it for that little quickie deal. I just thought I would um, come back and explain a little bit more about the printer. I'm still working on the white line issue. I'm not thrilled that it's happened, but I mean, I've got great copies. I can always use these for collage fodder. No biggie, I don't really care. This is the original. It will go in a file somewhere and I will never use the original, even though I scanned it. What if I want to rescan the original? That's why I don't get rid of any of my originals. They go in a file that say originals and I save them. So if I get a new scanner or a laser printer, I can scan this and I'm good to go. So thank goodness I didn't throw away the original because I had to rescan stuff like this. This is the original. I will never color on the original because this is what I use for scanning so that if I sell it in my Etsy store, you can print it off on colored paper, you can print it off on white paper, whatever your choice in your printer can accommodate. But I always save the original in case I have to rescan something. I have it and I don't have to scan or use a copy that I don't like. Now, I'm looking at the scanned image on the computer screen. No white lines appear anywhere on the black and white, the strictly black and white copy, this one that I scanned. No lines appear on it. The only time I see lines is if I print it with color. There's none on this one, but there are on the colored ones. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to scan this and print it and see if this is an issue about color, because if it is, this printer is no use to me. Just, it's kind of good for printing off tax forms or knitting patterns, not good for scanning my artwork. Okay, that is my gripe for the day. <laughs> That's all I have to say for today. I just thought you guys would like to know and learn from my mistakes. I will put the, um, in the title, I will put in there the name of my Epson printer so that if you're looking at printers, you know the problems that this specific Epson printer has, printer has with color copies on vellum or color copies on jelly prints, that kind of stuff. And it does not always accommodate the thickness or thinness of the paper that you are using. Okay, everybody, hopefully the next video will be something more happy. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Okay, so... <laughs> I did say there might be more happy next video. So let me tell you the happy for this one. All right, so I after you just got done watching the first part, I took this and I laid it on the printer and hit copy, not scan, copy. So this is the copy that came out. I don't see the white lines running through it. So I'm very happy about that, but there's a lot of color going on here. Nevertheless, I don't see that white line going through here like I did the other one. So then I thought, okay, let's scan the color copy, which I did. Then I made a print from the color copy, the scanned copy. There is a distinct difference. If you look at this and you look at that, they're two different shades which is fine, I guess. But when you make it like this and it's like this color, uh, no. <laughs> so anyway, I know it's being picky, but if I scan my artwork to sell online, I want my customers to get the best copy that I can put on there. And yes, their best copy is determined by their printer not by my stuff. But if I scan mine, if I scan this, I expect for it to look exactly like this. So that when my customer gets the file off my Etsy store, their copy will be like this, hopefully from their printer. But if I scan it and there's lines going through it, people are going to notice this. That is not quality and it's not good customer service. So that's why I'm really um, critical, critiquing this Epson printer because I'm not happy with lines through my work after I spent four days, four days working on this, drawing a little bit, 
letting it dry for a couple hours. Go back, draw a small space, let it dry overnight. Then go back and do four days, four days. So I want my customers to get the best link for my product as I possibly can. Now, if there's prints out like this, that's on them. But the original that I sell to them has got to be perfect when they use my link. Can't have lines through it. It's got to be a perfect copy. The color variation even varies on mine. This is how dark the original was that I colored with um, Sharpie alcohol. This is a photocopy of this, and you can see there's a difference in the colors. These are darker, these are lighter, and then this is, then I scanned it and ran a print off the scan, and here we go. There are three variations of that pink flower. I'm not thrilled, but it is my printer. So I try to do the best I can for what the scanned link is, and then whatever prints off on you, that's on you with your printer. I That's why I like doing black and white copies so you can color in and the color issue is on your printer, it's not on me. That's why I do a lot of black and white in the vellum is because you get to choose your colors. If you run this off on vellum, the vellum copy will be perfect because it's black and white. But if you copy it and run it off and it's a different color, that is your issue with your printer. Okay, so this is it. I'm not talking about the silly printer anymore, at least for a week. <laughs> All right, bye.